Oh, why, yes, hello. Hello there. I didn't see you. How are you doing today? It's a very special day. Over here for OPTC. Shout out to the good, great, perfect boys. They're putting together an award show. And in today's video, we'll be going through their forms. We'll be going through their nominations. And we'll be taking a look at the criteria for these prestigious award shows. With that said... Let's dive in. Yo, what is going on, homies? It's your boy, Stumped, back from the OPTC video. And in today's video, we're doing something a little bit different, doing something a little big special. Big shout out to my boy, Pappy. Huge shout out to my boy, Pappy. And a big shout out to the GGP boys for putting together an award show for 2021 on a bunch of different uh, categories for both the global and Japanese side of the game. So I'm actually pretty excited for this one. In today's video, we will be going through the form. Talking about the categories, talking about my nominations, what other good units are up for voting, I guess, or what I think would be up for voting, and uh, giving you guys a little bit of insight on how to vote yourselves. So, in the link in the description, there will be a link to what you guys see on the screen there. Head on over, make sure to put your nominees in, uh, because the boy Pappy is putting a lot of work into this, and a huge shout out to him. So, let's take a quick read of what's going on over here. So, The Good Great Perfect presents the OPTC Award Show of 2021 for both global and and the Japan server with nomination voting. Hi guys, Captain Pappy here as part of the end of year review with the Good Great Perfect podcast. Himself, Toadski, Flamebius, and Nightmare JP have decided to organize and host an award show for One Priest Treasure Cruise for 2021. This award show will be much akin to that of Anlord's OP2C Awards for 2020. The award show is being organized in respect and thanks to Anlord as well as a way we can get the community involved in wrapping up OPTs for both global and Japan for 2021. The following form lists the categories we will be giving awards to. Please leave your nominations in the areas provided below. Towards the end of November, we will be gathering all the nominees and creating a new form where you can vote for the chosen nominees as to which option best deserves the award. Note, there will be a new form created for the actual voting and this will come at a later date. We look forward to reading all the nominate nominees you provide. Please be sure to make to share this around the community so that we can make this as big as possible. If you have any questions regarding the award show process or anything, feel free to contact me on Discord, Captain Pappy5169, or on Twitter at Captain Pappy. Thanks. So, as I mentioned, big shout out to the boy Pappy, big shout out to Toadsky, Flamvius, and Knight, who will be putting this together in terms of, uh, look, obviously Manly Pappy and uh, those boys as well, but big shout out to all of those guys for putting this together. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I am super interested to see what makes the cut for all of the categories as well. So, let's hit this big old next button here, and let's... Below will be all the awards that are on offer. Please read the award in its description and give a few nominees for each category. So, I have spoke to Pappy. He'd say you can put a few nominations for each category. Uh, he said you can put one. For us, we'll just sort of... We'll just get... We'll just have a roll on and just see how he goes. So the nomination is for the best legend. This award goes to the best legend that has released from December 1st, 2020 until now. The legend can be either on Global or Japan. And it can be from the normal port or Super Sugar Fest. So I think a lot of people are always going to say Roger. Um, we do have a Sabo as well, the first uh, Super Switch character. They are a very, very good unit. Uh, I'm a big fan of Toki as well. If you guys have seen my tier list, I do rank Toki quite high. I think she's probably one of the most valuable legends in the entire game. Very, very good legend. And then obviously, you've got Yamato. Um, those characters there are like, like the creme de la creme when it comes to like the top of the patch. Uh, I do think these are the like, best characters in the game. Or the Yamatos. Um, you could say Yamato 6-star and Yamato 6+. All of, like, with those, like, five, they make up my top five best units. So, we'll chuck the top five there and just sort of see how they go from there. The nominations for the worst legend. That's a bit of a tricky one. Now, we obviously have the big one, Kuma. Rip, rip Kuma. Unfortunately, he did get his first legend, and it's just absolutely dookie. It is what it is for poor old Kuma, but look, it's there. Uh, I think Kazaru, like, on paper was a really good unit, but, like, he just ended up falling very, very short to what he actually does. Um... He's just not that... He's just not all that, you know? Like, he was very, very good, but now he's just not very good. Um, trying to think what other characters have released uh, since December 20, uh, December 1st. Um, Treasure Map Sanji. I am not a big fan of Treasure Map Sanji, like, at all. I, I think Treasure Map Sanji is quite useless um, compared to, like, other units that can just sort of do what he does. I, I just... I, I think he's a bum. I, I just don't think he's that good of a unit, and I just... I don't rate him very high. 
Um, another unit that I think is really, like, kind of needs a... Needs a 6 plus and needs a 6 plus, like, really badly. You could say, like, um... The Sweet 3. The Sweet 3 are a pretty underrated... Uh, uh, under... Uh, undervalued unit. I, I don't think they're that great at all. Um, Germa obviously got their 6 plus, so they're very, very strong. But Sweet 3, um... I, don't, I couldn't tell you the last time I used the Sweet 3, to be honest. Like, I, I physically could not tell you the last time I used that unit. So, I think we'll leave it at that. Um, those characters there are all pretty, like, how you going for me. Um, Enel, you could probably put in there too. But Enel at least has some sort of viability with his, like, end of turn damage. Alright, let's scroll down here to the nominations for the best super evolution. Now, for this one here, for me, there's, like, there's only, like, really one option. You've got German 6+. Plus. Like, German 6+, plus, like, absolute weapon of a super evolution. Very, very strong. You also have Sabo 6 Plus, the um the V3 Sabo or Dex Sabo we'll put Dex Sabo 6 Plus. He's very, very good. I'm a big fan of Dex Sabo 6 Plus. His um his buff giving that burn mechanic is very, very good. I just noticed I'm putting them these in the wrong section, so we're just gonna quickly do that. Fix that one up right up. Um Dex Sabo 6 Plus is very, very good. I'm a big fan of Nami 6 Plus too. I don't really use Nami 6 Plus that much. But, um, I think she got a very, very good upgrade. Very, very good upgrade indeed. Compared to, probably sort of, Dex Arbor 6 Plus and Germa 6 Plus. Like, I think Nami was probably the next best thing. And, obviously, we have, like, um, like, Olin. You could probably say Jack. But, at the same time, like, there's no, there's no reason to have them as a 5-star anyway. Um, but I guess you could also say another big one is Yamato. Yamato 6 Plus is just really, really good. Um, I, I'm gonna put her at the end of this list, though. Um, just because, like... I do think that, like, her 6-star is just as good as her 6+. plus. So, look, it is what it is. Nominations for the worst Super Evolution. The worst Super Evolution. We've had a few bad Super Evolutions, honestly. Like, we've had some really bad ones. Um, I think, what, Mihawks, V2 Mihawks was pretty bad. V2 Mihawks was, was like, was, like, no buff whatsoever. I think you could probably say V2 Zoros was pretty bad as well. He didn't really seem to get too much of a buff. He sort of just got, like, upgraded stuff. Um... I think uh, putting 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 six plus was just kind of like why like I don't know it's not a bad six plus like they didn't make her any worse but they just didn't make her any better like it was just it's just a waste of a six plus uh, they should have just waited and then just given her something then but I think those three are probably fine um, oh another one V two Sanji V two Sanji had a pretty dookie six plus like that like. His 6 plus is just, like, so relevant. Like, they could have made these units, like, like actually good. Uh, but instead, they just they just gave them pointless 6 pluses. Pudding, obviously, already was good. So, like, it didn't matter too much. But her Super Evolution, like, if you compare her, like, Germa, who was already good and then got a Super Evolution, just kind of was what it was. All right, nominations for the best rare recruit. Best rare recruit characters. Wow, this is a tricky one. Because, obviously, there has been a lot of releases of a lot of very good rare recruits. Like, a lot of very, very good rare recruit characters. One that stands out for me is um, Zoro, the um, the 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 Quick Zoro, the one that came out with the Super Type characters. I think Quick Zoro is just like he he's just so viable in so much content, and he's so so good. He's a very very good unit. Uh, another character that did come out um, quite recently actually uh, was the uh, Rockstar. The Rockstar unit um, sees a lot of play. Um, and it's good, because no, there's, like, not a lot of other Rockstars in the game. There's not another Rockstars to sort of, like, take his shine or take his prevenance. Um, so, he sees quite a bit of play. He can remove barriers. Uh, he can remove attack down as well. Any, like, rare recruit that can remove attack down is, like, really, really nice to have. Like, really, really nice to have. I do think the Rayleigh's really, really good, too. The, um, the Psy Rayleigh, the one that came out alongside, um, uh, Roger. I think he is still a very, very good unit. Two times color affinity, removing five turns of threshold and defense up. An amazing rare recruit. And I think Queen as well. Uh, Psy Queen. Psy Queen doesn't get much love. I use Psy Queen a lot. Um, so I think I think Queen is de definitely viable as a, like one of the options to be like best rare recruits. Uh, or even something like um, Strength King. But I, I don't really use Strength King all that much anymore, to be honest. Um, where I use Psy Queen a lot. Just because, like, that chain lock and removing defense up damage reduction is quite a prevalent combo. And just getting that chain lock is really, really nice as well. So, I think we'll leave it at that for now. If you if I wanted to add another one, I'd probably add Strength King. Um, but other than that, the only other one I can think of is maybe Quick Killer. Quick Killer was a pretty good rare recruit. Um, but I think just Zoro was just the best of that batch. So, we'll leave it at that for now. Nominations for Best Free-to-Play Unit. Best Free-to-Play Unit. 
There is two that come to mind for me, and they're both only on Japan. Like, both only on Japan. We've got Olin, the Kazuna Olin. The, um, the, the co-op Kazuna Olin, um, she is an absolute weapon. Um, giving six turns of special bind removal, giving six turns of damage reduction removal. She is a two times orb boost to driven powerhouse and int units. She rotates block orbs into Semla slots. For a free-to-play character, she is an absolute monster. We're actually just going to put 5+, plus, so that way we've actually got more room. Absolute monster of a character. Um, talking about um, co-op Kazunas 2, I guess we could say the 5-plus uh, Kuja Pirates over on the global side of the game. They're a very, very good unit too. They're not the other one that I was thinking of, but um, that 5-plus Kuja is really good because you get a guaranteed conditional, and they remove defense up too, which is really, really nice. The other character I was thinking of was Treasure Map um, Beast, or let's put Oni Luffy. The free-to-play uh, into Luffy, the one that comes out after Yamato, which should come quite soon on um, Global. We actually just got, like, the Icon data, data download um, with the Yamato stuff. This Oni Luffy is, like, one of my favorite free-to-play characters. He's a two-times attack boost. He's the best int Luffy in the game. He removes attack down. He removes special blinds. He has an amazing support on Yamato. Phenomenal free-to-play unit. Like, a really, really good free-to-play unit. When that treasure map comes around, make sure to farm him up. Make sure to get him done because he is very, very good. Other than that, the only other character I can think of is like 5 plus Jack, but I like haven't used that Jack um, on Japan. And look, like thinking of arena units, I can't really think of any arena units that I've sort of trumped these three or I've come even close to these three. So I'm going to leave it at these three for now and uh, we'll go on from there. Moving on to nominations for the best artwork. So best artworks in the game. That's, a, that's an interesting one. Best artworks in the game. I'm a big fan of the Straw Hat Pirates, like a really big fan of the Straw Hat Pirates, but I feel like, for me, that's the ink effect, and that's the next one down, so I think I'm going to hang on to that one. Best artworks in the game, I'm a big fan of the V3 Doflamingo. Um, the, the, the V3 Doflamingo, if I bring him up here, um, he's, an, he's got an amazing artwork, incredible artwork, where the fight between him and Luffy from Dressrosa, absolutely, absolutely phenomenal artwork, really, really good artwork. I actually, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, let's have a look and see what other characters we have here. Obviously, you can pick non-legend like legend characters, but the legend characters are the ones that sort of have the, the creme de la creme artwork. Redhead Pirates. I really like the Redhead Pirates art. It's, it's, sort, of, it's sort of quite basic, um, but it, it's quite effective at the same time. Um, Rob Lucci's... Nah, Rob Lucci's a bit how you going. Uh, I really like Queen's artwork, to be honest. I'm, I'm a big Queen artwork fan. I'm a big Queen, fa uh, Queen fan in general. Um, Ace Sabo's artwork's really, really cool. Uh, Fire Tank Pirates and Gecko Mori's got a pretty cool artwork. Um, other than that, like, there's not a lot of characters' artwork that I would say sort of jumps out at me as, like, amazing, amazing artwork. I'm a huge Boa Sim, so, like, Halloween Boa kind of, like, she kind of, she looking kind of nice. She looking kind of nice. Uh, I'm a big fan of the five star Rob Lucci artwork. I'm a big fan of the uh, five star Luffy artwork, to be honest. Um, I really like Law's artwork too. Law's got a really good artwork. Uh, Ace Sabo's got a pretty cool artwork. Marco's artwork's pretty nice. Marco's got pretty nice artwork. I think we'll have to slide Marco in there. I'm a big fan of Marcus Owex. It's probably the only thing he's got going for him, to be honest, when it comes to that particular character. Um, and look, I think I'm going to put Whitebeard versus Shanks. I'm a big fan of this clash. Like, I'm a huge fan of this clash. And I might say I'm biased. Uh, say I'm biased, because, like, um, that's fine. Because, like, versus Shanks, Whitebeard. Because I, I just love this unit. I think they're a phenomenal unit. Uh, they have phenomenal artwork. And that scene in uh, the anime, just, like, I love it so much. As for the uh, best ink effect, the best ink effect, a couple jump out to me. I'm a huge fan of the Straw Hats. The Straw Hats ink effect to me is absolutely phenomenal. The V3 Boa uh, ink effect, absolutely fire. Bellissimo of an artwork, that one. Just just absolutely gorgeous where the love heart comes in. The Straw Hats with the thousand logs that pops out the front. It's a really, really, really good artwork. I'm a big fan of that artwork. Um, looking at these other characters uh, on Japan, I'm a big fan of the Dofi artwork as well. I'd have to probably put the Dofi. I think Moria has a really good artwork as well. Like a really, really cool artwork. Um, 
because he gives like the bats. They 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 start animating. Oh, law! I'm a big fan of laws. Um, Final Tap laws artwork where he has like the um the room and it's like it, it moves. I, I think that's a phenomenal artwork as well. So I think that's gonna go down for my top like my my uh, my three favorites. Um, definitely these these three for the best ink effect. All right, let's move on to the most improved legend. Most improved legend. This award goes to the most improved legend since the release of December 21st. This is a unit that may have not seen a lot of use in play in the past, but has, as time has gone on, the unit has become more valuable and better in gameplay. That's a that's a that's a tough one for me. I think it's V3 Law. V3 Law just like always finds his way onto a team. Um. He hasn't really dropped off in um, a lot of, like, content. Like, you're always running him on as a sub, as an orb booster, as a chain locker. He just does so much of the team. I think you probably say the same thing for Redhead crew. Uh, the Redhead Pirates. Uh, let's just put Shanks crew, because, like, let's be honest what it is. That's what everyone calls it. Uh, I think Shanks crew as well. Like, as time's gone on, Shanks crew has just shown that he's phenomenal in on all aspects of content. Uh, but it says, like, he's not seen a lot of play in the past. I feel like, like, these characters have seen a lot of play in the past. And they just kind of got more play in the past. Uh, they just they just continued to get more play. So I don't know if we'd say if that's the most improved legend. Um, so I'm just having a bit of a scroll here. See if there's any characters. Most improved legend. Or most improved character, I guess. Like that was that's the big thing. Um, I guess like that. It's time's gone on. They've gotten more value. Like they just, they just, they're so good. Like they're so good in play. I think Sober Mask as well. Sober Mask is another one. Uh, most improved legend. So sorry, it is a legend. I apologize to take that back. So it is, it is the most improved legend. Um, Sober Mask is definitely another one. And I think Sugar, like Sugar, Sugar just continuously shows that she's amazing as a sub. Like really, really good. So. I think I'm going to leave it at that. It's a bit of an ambiguous one. That one there, the most improved legend. Um, i got to remember, though, it says from December 21st. So, like, none of these... I think Sugar's probably the only... No, nah, not even. Like, these characters... None of these characters have released since December 2021. So, releasing from December 2021. Um, the most improved legend... So for global, I think like Big Mom Kaido and stuff, they came out this year. Because like Luffy and that, they all came out this year as well. I can't remember when Sugar and Smoker and stuff released. I think they released, yeah, they released November last year. So I feel like... Because I'm thinking like on global, that's when, they, when, when, when the global release was. I guess Shirohoshi Mancherry V2. V2 Shirohoshi Mancherry is still um, absolutely insane. Um, we can't go past them. Definitely can't go past uh, the Shirohoshi Mancherry dual unit. Absolute weapon of a character. Um, I think V3 Zoro. V3 Zoro is definitely... <sighs> I'd say V3 Zoro... And uh, Gecko Moria, Gecko Moria definitely, um, definitely, as time's gone on, has just gotten better because Driven has just gotten so much support. Uh, with the release of Queen, like Zoro still works really, really well. You don't have to make like like quick teams with Zoro. You could like make Driven teams, like Driven quick teams, and he works very, very well. Sure, Hoshi Mantra is just like aging with like fine wine. So I feel like those three are probably the most improved legends, just because as time goes on, they just continuously get more and more support. Sure, Hoshi Mantra being cerebral and strikers too, they work with Kid, which is great. Uh, nominations for most overrated legend. Most overrated legend. This is gonna be a real fun one. I'm gonna. I feel like there's gonna get a lot, a lot of answers here. For me, I'm gonna put Final Tap Luffy. I'm not saying Final Tap Luffy's bad, but lots of people love this character, and I just, I just, I can't wrap my head around it. I can't wrap my head around Onigashima Luffy and why he's so hype. I just can't do it. Like I just don't understand how. So I'm definitely gonna put um the. The final tap Luffy there. 
Oh, that's another one too, actually. Uh, if we scroll back up to Worst Legend, where's Worst Legend? I feel like we have to put um, uh, V3 Blackbeard. V3 Blackbeard needs to go up here too. I guess we'll take away Treasure Map Sanji, just because I do think Treasure Map Sanji is better than everyone else that I just put there. So, shout out to the Sanji fans, fanboys. Yeah, your boy just, he, he just scraped off the cut. Um, if we have a look at most overrated legend, who else can we look at here? This Raju when she released, everyone was raging about Raju, about being absolutely amazing. And I think ulti page one, probably a bit overrated as well. I definitely want to put Raju. Ah, Kaido. V, this, this Kaido, V2 Kaido. For sure. B2 Kaido absolutely gets way too much love. I I don't I don't understand the love about V2 Kaido. To me, he's just He's just I, I don't even have words for him. It's just like why? Like he's just definitely one of the most overrated legends in the game, in my opinion. Like just absolutely overrated. To a to a T. To a T. Um finally I think we'll put Raju. Um Whilst I think, like, like ulti page one were kind of overrated, their switchability is still so good, yeah. So, I feel like Raju was another one. Like, Raju, like, is good because, like, she's a three-turn powerhouse, like, booster. But, like, everyone's like, oh, she has the Raju poison. It's so good. I'm like, no, it's really, it's really not. It's really not that good. It's not that good. But, look, it is what it is. Nominees for most underrated legend. Underrated legend. This one's a big one. For straight up, Fire Tank Pirates. Fire Tank Pirates do not get enough love. They are absolutely, they're an absolute weapon. They've got a great switch ability, they've got a great captain ability, they've got a great um, special ability. Phenomenal, phenomenal unit, and Driven just gets better and better and better as time goes on. They are exceptional, very, very good units. Verse, Shank, first Shanks and Whitebeard. First Shanks and Whitebeard, they don't get enough love. Definitely don't get enough love. Everyone was raving on about how trash they were when they first came out, because we had all the Onigashima Legends. Oh, a Sabo. Whitebeard, Shanks, they're just as good. Like, they are on the cuff of, like, my top five, to be honest. Like, they are right there with Ace Arbo, uh, Ace, um, Ace, versus Ace Akainu. Um, versus Shanks and Whitebeard, like, they definitely do not get enough love. They are definitely, definitely very, very underrated. Um, very phenomenal verse Legend. Uh, one of my favorite Legends in the game as well. Um, their base stat boost cannot be underrated. When Verse Shanks, Whitebe uh, Verse Shanks' verse ability pops off, it works absolute wonders. Check out the Shiro Doji. I actually used him recently. Versus Whitebeard, his verse ability is absolutely great for just tanking. And they both have very, very good specials. Shanks being an orb manipulator, um, just absolute god. Our next one is Summer, Summer Vivi. Summer Vivi, I, th I think Summer Vivi gets the love that she deserves as well. Summer Vivi is an absolutely phenomenal unit. Ridiculously good. Same reason as Shanks. Rotates block orbs and mat into matching orbs. Three turns of an orb boost. She has a great super type. Really, really good unit. Absolute weapon of a unit, to be honest. Way better than the Raju. And no one really talks about these characters. Um, I think Toki's very underrated as well, to be honest. Like, Toki... Toki doesn't get too much love for what we do see. Uh, I don't think Bonnie gets enough love as well. Like, Bonnie's very underrated. Um, or just sort of flies under the radar. But for, the, for me, the Straw Hats as well. Like, the... Um, let's just put Vivi, because there's only one Vivi, right? Um, we'll just put super type Luffy, VV. Um, we're just gonna put FTP for that, just so we got more room. And I hate call- no, I'm, I can't do it, I can't write wanks, I just can't do it, I, I literally can't do it. Um, I think the Straw Hats, the Straw Hats definitely underrated, people think that, like, they're just absolute dookie, they write them off completely. Uh, you can, you pair them up with Toki, they are very, very good, like, a very, very good legend, in my opinion. I use them quite a bit on Japan, and they just work absolute wonders. Um... And the other one for me is Bonnie. Like, Bonnie, I don't think Bonnie gets the true love, like, the true recognition that she deserves. Any, like, I think that, like, Whitebeard vs. Shanks, Bonnie, and Fire Tank Pirates, because they came around out around the same time as um, the Onigashima Trio, all the hype was around those, like, last tap units. So, like, these particular characters, like, they just didn't get much love, being Bonnie, Fire Tank Pirates, and then Whitebeard vs. Shanks. Because, like, they're that core, everyone just sort of looked at and went, Oh my god, look how good these units are! And these other units sort of just were like, well, hey, like, look at me as well. So, I'm going to leave it at that. Five is definitely enough. Um, I could ramble on about most underrated legends all day of the week. Like, honestly, like, there's a lot of characters that just don't get enough love. Um, and for me, like, you could easily put Moria. Moria's another one. Like, Moria definitely doesn't get enough love too. But, like, there's other characters that are just better than Moria, though. Like, Luchi and stuff like that. But, look, at the end of the day, Moria's another character that doesn't get enough love. Nominations for the best banner. The best banner. 
you've got to have the the um the super the super sugo the new year's eve super super sugo uh with roger and odin uh you can't go past that i i, I don't think anything beats that banner that banner was just absolutely incredible like i don't remember a banner that was that good i think um verse ace of Kainu's, their banner was actually pretty good though because they renewed it from um japan that banner was actually really good on global um I think that banner was really good but nothing really comes like comes close to this banner the rodent banner nothing ever like comes close to that so we're gonna put those two and we're just gonna call it a day there nominations for the my favorite game mode favorite game mode is available for treasure map kazuna pirate rumble etc i think like kazuna especially like um the super boss the super boss kazuna i think is the best game mode uh and then i guess you could say um garb challenges uh garb challenges are a lot of fun um I'm a big fan of forests myself and like that harder content. I like trying to figure things out and like d diving into the puzzle side of things when it comes to um, this game. But I'm a big fan of the 13 star garb challenges because just because you don't have to go through the first 10 stages and you don't have to sit through all the bullshit basically. But I do like forests. I just think we need more garb challenges, 13 star events. And the Kazuna super bosses, Kazuna's in general are probably my favorite. And then just having super boss content as well to play. Um, it's just a lot of fun. The best new update feature. Best new update feature from just December twenty, uh, just December first, twenty twenty. The feature that has changed OPTC for the better. For example, the candy stacking, the search bar, like that. You've just named the two best ones right there, Pap. Like <laughs> you haven't even. You don't need it. Like you didn't even need to give the question. You just go. You didn't say which one's better. Candy stacking or search bar. For me, I'm gonna say the search bar was the biggest one. Like the search bar. The search bar for me is absolutely massive. Being able to search in game just saves so much time. Like so, especially on global. It, it saves so much goddamn time. I guess you could say, like, alliances as well. That was another feature that was pretty cool. Um, I'll, I'll slap alliances on here. The, the cotton candy slider, like, there's, there's no doubt the cotton candy slider was very, very good. Um, like, all of those very, very good updates. Um, very, very good features in the game. But for me, the big one's the search bar. If I had to put one, search bar would be for me. Nominations for the best moment of the year. I think New Year's Eve... Roden, like that was that was hands down like one of the best like moments ever um the game's never been more hyped than it was for roger and odin like it it's never been more hyped the closest we've had is the yamato the yamato event the way that they did the yamato event um releasing it exactly the same time as the anime i thought was very very clever and they did a really really good job uh, i think they should do that more in the future and i feel like that's a good way like with the sync coming up that they're gonna like create more hype for some of these units very very good idea well done bandai on that one the most anticipated character feature character or feature for 2022 so i think the big one is like I think that's the big one, right? Like, everybody wants that, right? Like, it, you can't doubt it. Like, it was an amazing, amazing scene. Like, like that is, like, probably one of the most anticipated characters going around. Like, definitely one of the most anticipated characters. For me... I really want to see a Luchi versus Luffy unit. But at the same time, like, to make that the first Luffy versus unit, it's, it's a big ask because Luffy has so many good fights. Um... And look, Luchi just did get a really, really good new legend. So, like, I can't complain too much about that. Um, so, other than, like, Whitebeard versus Roger, for me, like, I would love to see, like... I would like to see, like, a game, like, a, like a game mode update in terms of, like, like, a tower, like, a tower fighting update. Similar to, like, um... Uh... Something like, uh, what's called Battlefield on, um, Dokkan or something like that. Where you have to, like, use a bunch of characters and then you sort of have to build teams depending on what you're fighting. Uh, and then once you've used those characters and cleared the content, you can't go past that. So you have to, like, jump in, figure out what the content does, use some characters, and then once you've done that, you can't use them again. Um, and then you, like, you select your characters from your box, so you need to, like, find out what the, what the, what the tower does. Something like that could be really, really cool and would just sort of bring back viability to some, some older units. Um, and then it just progressively gets harder and harder over time. Uh, obviously, Whitebeard Roger as a unit would be amazing. I think we need a new croc. I think everyone's talking about a new croc. Like, like let's be real. Like, give us a new croc, Bandai. It's 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 a it's a shame that there's only one croc in the game. He's a very, a very very good villain. A very 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 good villain that only has one representation in the game. We need a new Kuma. Like you butchered Kuma, so just give us a new one. Just scrap that Kuma and give us a new one. Honestly, scrap scrap Pirate Rondo. Like make. Make Pirate, Rumble, make Pirate Rumble Legends 
That's all. In actual play. Like all the Pirate Rumble legends in like regular play, they just suck. Like they they just they just don't hold viability. So like let's make let's make Pirate Rumble Legends better in actual play. Otherwise, just scrap the concept of Pirate Rumble Legends, to be honest. Or make their like cost lower in Rumble or something like that. I don't know. If I figure it out, Bandai, because the Pirate Rumble Legends suck. So we're gonna hit the submit form. And say thanks for voting if you guys want to you can submit another response you can do this as many times as you want as i mentioned i will leave a link in the description below make sure to go follow pappy make sure to go follow the boys at ggp if you don't know who they are i'll leave a link in the description to them as well surely you know who they are it's goddamn ggp but while you're down there don't forget to smash that like button for me if you're new to the channel hit the big red subscribe button too but guys wherever you are in this beautiful world please remember to enjoy the rest of your day as always homies i thank you all for watching and i'll catch you all in the next one. Later!